This video blog is about processor modeling for system level design. Now, one of the earlier solutions to the measurement of software performance was done using an instruction set simulator alone. One of the challenges, however, is that it does not take into account the dynamic behavior exter of external memory hierarchies. And this dynamic behavior includes contention for access to the bus, dynamic cache state, and the variable times that it takes to perform read and write operations to and from memory, depending upon the addresses of where, or the locations within memory of where the data is, is needed. There were, after this, attempts to address this lack of dynamic external memory hierarchy by the use of ISS integration into a system level design. But this has its own unique uh, challenges. The first is the availability of the ISS. It takes on the order of many months to develop an ISS, and this is comparatively expensive. The additional challenge, of course, is if the processor itself does not exist and one wants to determine software performance on a new processor architecture. It also requires that the software be complete, that there exists the desired operating system, and that the proper compiler targeted for the processor be available. We found that ISS integration as complex and detailed as that is, is not appropriate for system level design and trade-off analysis, but it is appropriate for highly detailed virtual prototyping and functional verification where all of the architecture decisions have been made. The ideal solution for system level design, especially for early uh, system development, includes the following. A generic processor model which requires the, uh, on the order of days to develop instead of months. Uh, a processor model that can be easily configurable so that it would match the uh, configuration of a specific or target processor. This solution also does not require that the software itself be completed and it doesn't require specialized compilers, or the existence of the target operating system. It needs to, or it does, easily connect to the memory hierarchy, which could be changeable depending upon the results of system level analysis. And so therefore, this generic processor model, properly configured, easily supports hardware architecture trade-offs. And once configured, it possesses a sufficient level of accuracy for system level analysis. Now consider the following block diagram. This diagram contains a configured processor model, an instruction set on which the processor model operates, and the external memory hierarchy which is composed of the bus, the cache, and the DRAM. This processor was configured in a couple of days. To configure the processor, all one has to do is specify a simple set of parameters, such as where the instruction set is located, the number of registers, context switching time, the speed of the processor, which can be parameterized, and other items such as level 1, level 2 caches within the processor itself. And if there is an internal cache miss, a specification of where the uh, external cache is, or at least an indication of the name of the external uh, cache block. In addition, you will specify the processor's pipeline. And the instruction set configuration is very easy. What one does in the instruction set is to identify and specify all of those instructions that dominate software performance. Each instruction has the appropriate mnemonic as well as the number of cycles it takes to execute on the target processor. Finally, the dynamic um, performance 
of the external memory hierarchy is taken care of by bus model, which supports contention for resources and other bus specific protocols. The cache model, which updates its internal cache state, thereby representing dynamic cache uh, activity, as well as the dynamic access times to memory, depending upon where the read and write operations are targeted. And when running the simulation, we can see the processor activity, such as the uh, cache activity, the refresh uh, uh, activity here, the bus data transfers, and other activities according to things like registers and, and other items within the processor. One can also measure the performance of the processor looking at a utilization plot, for example. And one can also look at a detailed generation of statistics for the processor, um, including utilization as well as pipeline utilization and, of course, the latencies of the software running on the processor. And what this allows you to do is to measure software performance on the target architecture with the variable performance of the external memory hierarchy thereby getting a far more accurate system level measurement of the important metrics that you're trying to measure. And it al also allows you to perform uh, system trade-offs, uh, trading off one processor for another, trading off different memory hierarchies, uh, and also modeling software performance on yet to be developed processors. This concludes our video blog on processor modeling in system level design.